Hello guys, how you doing? It's me, Jack, mate. Now, today, we're going to have a little bit of a different video. I've got a loose idea of what I want to talk about, but I haven't got no script. I haven't thought this through. I've just turned the camera on. I don't think I've done one of these unplanned, sit-down, chatty type videos in a long, long time, so I'm quite looking forward to it. And in all honesty, guys, I am going to be sharing some personal things about my private life today that I haven't ever spoken about on YouTube before. Now, that doesn't mean the video's got to go all black and white and go dramatic and have some sad music over it, but... I mean, it would get me more views. <laughs> Basically, guys, one of the main reasons, well, not even one of, the main reason that I do YouTube is because of the money. And I know saying that is almost like YouTube suicide, and I understand it, but that's the truth. But I do want to talk a bit about why I do YouTube for the money. Please note that I did say the main reason for why I do YouTube videos is because of the money, not the sole reason, not the only reason. I literally get so much out of YouTube, the list for why I continue to do it is, is pretty much endless. I mean, the opportunities that come through YouTube are phenomenal. I get to travel the world, I get to do things I never ever dreamed that I would be the one doing. I remember when I was 15, 16, still living at my mum's house, I'd be up all night in my bedroom just looking at other people's vlogs of where YouTube sent them and I never ever dreamt in a million years that it would be me going to these places. I mean, YouTube has taken me to places like LA and Las Vegas and Trinidad Tobago. I've been, it's, it's, it's been a journey for sure. It's been a fucking crazy journey and I wouldn't change any of it. And another massive reason for why I do this is obviously you guys. I'll get to this bit a bit later on, but I'm under no illusion that I wouldn't be in the position that I am today if it wasn't for my audience. And obviously I don't have the biggest numbers in the world, I don't have the biggest audience even in Norfolk probably, but for a channel that's not even at 300k yet, like this channel, I have a scarily devoted and engaged audience, it's mental. I'm forever having to sit back and just try and take it all in, do you know what I mean? I will never be able to understand why you guys devote so much of your time to me, my content, my channel, reading my tweets, sharing the videos, but I'm eternally thankful. I'm overwhelmed every time I see a video do well or a tweet get retweeted. I know it's only social media, but it's not just social media to somebody like me, to a YouTuber, it is my life. And I'm very aware that it's you guys that allow me to travel the world. You guys allow me to live the life that I do. You guys allow me to treat the people around me. And I guess that's what brings me back onto money. This isn't a sob story. I don't want you guys to feel sorry for me or any bullshit like that. Growing up, my family weren't the richest. Okay, we weren't the poorest, but we weren't the richest. I went to quite a rough school. I grew up in a council house. I never went without. My mum and dad were always there and they, they, they always got me everything I wanted and I couldn't have lived a happier childhood. But I did live a relatively sort of council house life, if that that makes sense. And then when I got to about 15 or 16, my mum, I've never said this before on YouTube, but I don't speak to my mum anymore. I haven't done for about four years. I haven't spoken to my mum since, and that's because she's she's an alcoholic. Uh, and, and, and growing up, she'd often get drunk and she'd throw things and kick off and do all this mad shit that I know wasn't her but it was the it was the it was the vodka. And me and my sister really did try to make the relationship work with my mum. I mean I mean, we fucking tried. It's not like I just woke up one day and went, oh, she's an alcoholic now, I better go. We really tried, like, we would find her vodka hidden around the house and we would get it and we would pour half of it out, fill it up with water, put it back, try and water it down so it didn't fuck with her head as much as it did. Anyway, uh, anyway, as I said, it's not a sob story. One thing led to another and it, it just wouldn't work out. I essentially left home as a 18, 17 year old, something like that. I left home and I went and moved in with my uncle and I had a little bedroom upstairs in in his council house and a couple of nights after I'd left home and I was in this new house and I was sort of sat in this room and it was it was not a very nice room in all honesty so I was sat in this room with just me in my head and I was looking at about at the possessions that I would brought along I had my computer I had my camera and to be honest with you guys that was about it I was at a crossroads in my life I was still at college at the time and I thought to myself I need to make a decision now. YouTube has always been my dream and, and and at the time I hadn't made any money from YouTube. Maybe a hundred pound here and there but nothing serious, nothing that I could have ever lived on. So I looked at my camera and my computer and back at my camera and back at my computer and I made the decision to drop out of college. At a time when everything was crumbling, everything seemed to be going wrong. It was a brave decision to make. So I went to college the next day and I quit. And I went home and I just started making YouTube videos. YouTube videos that make me cringe to look back on, but I mean, we all have to start somewhere. There's a moth in. What the fuck? 
But hey, I'm telling a fucking story. I'm telling a serious story. Do you do this to Piers Morgan when he's on the life stories? Anyway, a long story short, I kept pumping out these YouTube videos and three months later I earned my first big YouTube check. I think it was about 500 quid. I cried. I cried when I received I was so happy that I'd made that first step onto the ladder that I actually cried. And from that moment on, I kept at it on my own. I kept at it. I didn't do YouTube collaborations. I didn't have already existing YouTube famous friends. I literally just kept pumping out content like that. I mean, I got asked to go to London and interview Leona Lewis, who I couldn't give a shit about, but I knew it would help me eventually. So I paid the 50 pound train fare. I went to London, I did that. I was back and forth, back and forth. I really, 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 really worked hard. And now I'm in a much different position. Now I have money, which I'm f I'm so thankful for. Like when I get a brand deal that's that much money, I look back at that kid that was in the council house with his alcoholic mum and I think, how did you, how did you make that happen? But I'm so proud of myself. I never fully, it's, I don't feel like it's me. I still don't feel like I'm worthy of it. So anyway, I moved out now. I've got a lovely girlfriend. I'm in my own place. I've got a fair bit of money saved up. I, I'm in a very, very good place. I still don't speak to my mum, but I'll tell you who I do speak to. I speak to Manan almost every day. I love Manan more than anyone else on this planet. And my granddad, of course. Manan and my granddad are the two most important people in my life. And in a way, they always have been. My nan and granddad are fucking phenomenal. Now, I know everybody says that about their own nan and granddad. And in a way, we're probably all right. I've got four cousins. And every single birthday, every single Christmas, we would go around there. And my nan had bought us just heaps and heaps of presents at Christmas. Just wrapped up. There would be five. One for Reese, one for me, one for my sister, one for Jay. And I don't know to this day how she afforded it. Probably Nick's. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know how she afforded it because she only works at the local hospital. That was all she did. But we never went without. Do you know what I mean? We were the most spoiled children in the world and I had such a happy childhood and it was because mainly my my nan and granddad. I do want to give a special mention to my dad as well because I love him to bits. He's my best mate and he never made me go without either but I just I just want to focus this video on my nan and granddad. My nan, very much like me, she was raised by her nan. She didn't have the best relationship with her mum. And she told me a story that she'd always run home from school and she'd ask her nan for 10p or 20p or however much it was back then so that she could go swimming or go to the cinema with her friends. And because she was from a very, very poor family, her nan could never afford this. Her nan could never hand over that money. So she'd always say, she'd always say no. However, a few hours later or the next day or a week later, She'd have that 10p or that 20p or that 50p and she'd go to my nan and she'd give it to her and she's like, now you can go swimming. Now you can go to the cinema. And it was only until my nan's nan passed away that my nan found out that when she realised how much money she wanted, she would go around all the neighbours and she'd do their ironing and she'd, she'd do their washing and she'd just, she'd earn this money to pass on to my, to my nan so my nan could go. Um, my nan was like, has, and although I was never lucky enough to meet this woman, my nan speaks so highly of her and, and she, in my nan's opinion, this woman is the best woman that ever existed. Well nan, if you're watching this, to me and all the cousins and my sister, you would be doing your nan so proud. You do so much for me. I, I so, I'm so soppy. I just wanted to make a video just to express my love for my nan and granddad because they're the best people in... They're the best people I've ever met and I'm so lucky. Anyway guys, the reason why I tell you these stories is because last year, and I'm not saying this to Brad, because of the money that I am lucky enough to be on through YouTube, I was able to pay for my nan to have a holiday with her friend in Spain. My nan had already booked the holiday, she was already going, she didn't know I was going to do this. She'd paid it out of her own pocket, she'd saved up, worked hard, yada yada yada. And then a week before she went, I found out how much the holiday had cost, I withdrew the money from my bank account, I put it in an envelope and I gave it to her. And I said, there you go, that's your holiday paid now. And she opened it, and as you can imagine, she cried in front of me, and it was hands down the best feeling I've probably ever had. And it was at that moment that I realised that it wasn't me paying for my nan to go on holiday. It was my audience, in many respects. It was my viewers. You guys gave me that opportunity. If it wasn't for you guys watching collectively in your thousands, I wouldn't have the CPM, I wouldn't have the brand deals, I wouldn't have these nice things, I wouldn't have been able to treat my nan, who has treated me for so many years. And even if YouTube dies tomorrow, even if I get mugged, even if my money liquidates, I will always have that memory, and so will she. And that's because of YouTube, and that's, that's mental. So that's why the main reason I do YouTube is because of the money. Because I am still just that poor, scruffy, shaven head, ginger, spotty kid from that council home in Mile Cross, 
Norwich. I'm still very much that guy. I'm just lucky enough to have a devoted audience behind me now. And I sometimes use silver dye. So I just wanted to share that story with you because it's something I always think about. So I am definitely going to do more things in the future about my nan and granddad. And I'd like to tell you guys some of the stories that my nan and granddad have done for me growing up. Because, as I say, they're the best people in the world and I think you deserve to hear it. It would be a shame if I didn't share their warmth and their kindness. I'm sorry this video wasn't a normal, funny rant. Sorry I didn't slag anyone off. I just felt like I wanted to share that for once and just have a bit of a sit down and not think about what was going to be said. Just say it. And I just want to thank you guys endlessly for that because you don't have to share or even watch my videos but you continue to do so. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching guys. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. My name's been Jack. I'm a YouTuber. I've got the best nan and granddad in the world and arguably the best YouTube audience in the world. Thank you very much. See you soon. There's a moth in. What the fuck?